talk about passion or resilience, and that's another thing <coughs> the minister of faith, <coughs> to recognise or make reference to in a speech, was about national resilience. We know that they cut the national resilience budget by around 20 million pounds. But the answer is they have five more But if we were to have a major incident of a tether into the tank, and all those the professionals and that was there, uh, the, the youth start teams and all the, the training and everything that we each and other find rescue services are undertaken for a number of years, would, would have been lost. So, if anything, this government should sit back and evaluate what the cuts have done and what, what the consequences of their decisions, because without doing that, it just doesn't give them that greater understanding about where we're going over the next couple of years. Because beyond 2020, you know, again, we're going to be reduced, the number of services are going to be reduced. It's how is the fire and rescue service going to work? What's it going to look like? How, how, we, how are we going to respond to it? Because in Ken Knight's review, he was very critical on the difference of governance arrangements because the, <coughs> the metropolitan authorities combined with authorities, the county councils. So he was critical of three different government models. And now, because of the Peace and Crime Bill, and because of the Citizens and Devolution Bill, you'll actually go from three governance models to six. So it's ridiculous, isn't it? You know, they're going to, if they take the eye off the ball, something's going to happen. And then who's going to be left to blame? Who's going to be holding the baby? So they need to have a look at this. And that's why I suggest that we bite to and just highlight these failures <coughs> within the government and call on them to make a full evaluation of our risk assessment before it's too late. So are we agreed on that?
occasion, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kane were known to a number of agencies, certainly that had referrals in, that by the next door neighbour to the housing association, they were known to the local authority relating to environmental health issues, certainly, and they were known to the finance exchange. But all of those agencies have been refused entry into the property, and hence Mr. Rebello's recommendation that we would be given powers of entry, uh, not just in relation to a fire, but in relation to circumstances that could lead to a fire. What I want to say to members is how far the work that we will undertake now prior to the, to the response from the um, Lord MP is that existing legislation does exist in this regard. And so members will be aware that there is legislation around the Care Act, around capacity and capability uh, for an individual. And whilst we don't consider that with lack of capacity on, under these circumstances, it's certainly a consideration. We've also got you know, family legislation around the Human Rights Act. And, you know, and Property was privately owned, and individuals on the basis of circumstances can refuse entry uh, into the property, and that certainly needs to be protected uh, as we, we move forward. We have the Environmental Health Act, which also allows entry under certain circumstances for, you know, for, for certain staff to undertake certain actions, and you recognise some of the stuff that needs to become a collaborative response to a particular issue. You have the Mental Health Act, uh, again. Certainly, hoarding is identified for the mental, mental health related issue, and certainly there's a legislation that can support us tackling it in a broader sense. We all have statutory duties you know, in regards to safeguarding of vulnerable you know, children, you know, vulnerable adults, and the utilisation of that legislation to support the individuals under the circumstances to prevent future deaths. And as a result of all of those things, you know, we would have to kind of understand the response from uh, Amber Road MP before we any of these forward. However, in the interim, in the short term, we have a tendency to write to each one of the safeguard boards to identify the issues that have been highlighted and to, to put in place measures which will ensure that we are <coughs> working on this as a collective and um, where we believe that the individuals who are holding you know, material, it may prevent them from escaping in the event of a fire, um, but we can deal with it in a broader sense of a multi agency approach. I'm happy to take any additional questions if required.
they say. And then we'll go from there. So I'm mindful that the next policy meeting is to be 25th of May. If we do get a response, 